The chapter started with the destruction of the windmill in which humans believed it collapsed due to the thinness of the wall rather than the actions of Snowball. During this time, food was short due to the frost brought upon them, for rumors had been spread by humans about the animals having restored it to cannibalism. Then in January, Napoleon started to make less appearances in public, in which he stayed in the farm house by himself. Guarded by his dogs, the only times he made any appearances was due to ceremonial of manners. Napoleon agreed to sell 400 eggs a week. The other animals reacted with shock. One of Old Major's complaints about humans focused on the cruelty of egg selling, or so they remembered. The hens rebelled and Napoleon responded by cutting the rations entirely. Nine hens died before the other gave in to Napoleon's demand. Soon afterwards, the animals feared to the extreme distress that Snowball had been secretly visiting the farm at night. In sabotaging the animals' efforts, Napoleon says that he can detect Snowball's presence everywhere and whenever something appears to go wrong, to fight back. One day, Squealer announces that Snowball has sold himself to Mr. Frederick's farm, Pinchfield, and that the treacherous pig has been in league with Mr. Jones. The animals would no doubt believe Squealer's conspiracy about Snowball. Four days later, Napoleon ordered all animals to assemble in the yard for a group meeting. He walked out the farmhouse wearing two medals which he awarded to himself. Nine dogs walked by his side, creating fear and tension among the animals. The dogs grabbed the four pigs that protested against Napoleon's removal of Sunday mornings. The dogs viciously murdered the four pigs. Two dogs turned over to Boxer and one suddenly attacked. Boxer quickly reacted and kicked the dog and placed his hoof on the neck, making the dog shriek for mercy. Napoleon ordered Boxer to let the dog go. Napoleon then used fear to make other animals come forward and confess their crimes. Total of 10 animals were killed for being alive to snowball in some sort of way. The animals that were still alive stood staring at the dead corpse, shaking and miserable. Clover reminisced about Mr. Jones' day. No animals were killed in that amount since before the revolution. The animals united and began to sing Beast of England, only to be told by Squealer that the song had been abolished. The farm had a new song which they sang every Sunday morning after the hoisting of the flag. Soviet Russia struggled against a largely justified reputation for industrial incompetence, mean and poor management. Stalin's vaunted five-year plans for agriculture resulted in starvation of millions of people and industrial production lagged far behind the capitalist West. But the Soviets were determined to master their problems and keep them from the eyes of the rest of the world. Poland's transformation of the exile snowball into a despicable enemy to all who care about the good of animal farms mirrors Stalin's abuse of the exile chokotatsi. Animals who've even shown a disapproval towards Napoleon, they gain a swift death. After forcing Trotsky's exile from Russia, Stalin continued to claim the existence of Trotsky's plots. Throughout Soviet society. During the 1930s, he staged a number of infamous purges, show trials, during which Stalin and his allies essentially forced government members to members and citizens to confess their complicity with Trotsky's or other anti-Stalinist conspiracies. This basically intertwines with the idea of which um, Napoleon tries to blame Snowball and his conspirators for, you know, causing damage to Animal Farm. And <clears throat> in many cases, the purge victims would admit to activities in which they had never engaged simply to put a stop to their torture, but after confessing, the allied alleged conspirators were executed as enemies of the people, which then relates to how Napoleon killed off the animals who were said to be um, allied with Snowball and his actions towards or against Animal Farm and aligned with Mr. Jones. <clears throat> and Stalin used his purges to eliminate any descendant elements in his government, provided his people with a common enemy to despise and keep both the populace and his staff in a state of fear for their own safety, making them far less likely to disobey orders or challenge his rule in any way. Just as the pigs rewrite history, they manipulate statistics in their favor, claiming that every important aspect of life on the farm has improved statistically since the rebellion. Animal, animals live longer, eat more, have more offspring, work fewer hours, and so forth. In this way, the pigs produce a false vision of reality. Then, with, by ensuring that this reality is only one 
to which the other animals have access in by establishing an effective death penalty for any animal who questions it, they rendered their dictatorship indestructible. Fear makes animals inclined to believe the pig's propaganda and by allowing themselves to believe in the confronting lies, animals find what may be the only safe haven for, from violence and terror. Yay. Oh, I didn't tell you were recording. <laughs> Yikes! The chapter started with the destruction. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> 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 Soviet Union. I got you. And Trotskotsky, or however you pronounce his name, is spelled T O. Wow. T R O T S K Y. And <laughs> <laughs> to continue on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a demo quizoid. Anyway. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs>